This is Sean Patrick Kelly, and here's my uh, Antasia 2023 interview for uh, Where the Devil Roams with the Toby Poser and Lulu, Lou Adams. Uh, the film had its world premiere at the Fantasia Film Festival, and they're previously best known for their films The Deeper You Dig from 2019 and Hellbender from 2021. I uh, hope you enjoy this interview. Okay, so so um, how did the idea for the film come about? So the idea for this film came about a couple, maybe three years ago. I kept having this reoccurring nightmare um, about this clown that kept popping up at the side of my bed. Mm -hmm because I watched American Horror Story season four, mm -hmm. Freak Show, and the clown in it was so terrifying mm -hmm. that I realized I just, I kind of had to explore that nightmare a little bit more. Like, you know what, maybe the, maybe the clown isn't so bad. Maybe mm -hmm. he has a family. And uh, so I kind of brought that to the family, like, hey, what about a story about like a clown and his family, like traveling on the circuit and like, they're actually the protagonists and not the bad guys. And they kind of loved the idea, and we started throwing it around and realized, you know what, we're not going to do a clown story, but we are going to do a carnival family. And I'm just super happy with the way that it, the idea and the nightmare evolved into something beautifully weird. So um, how would you compare the carny atmosphere in Where the Devil Roams to what is seen in American Horror Story? Or you mentioned in the Q&A Nightmare Alley. <laughs> I've actually never seen Nightmare Alley. Have you guys seen it, right? I would say, yeah. In, I liked Nightmare Alley a lot, but um, ours is m more like the backstage <laughs> of the carnival. When, when John and I watched that, it turned, John turned to me at one point, and he's like, we are so fucked. <laughs> he's like, no, but we're not making that kind of carnival. Um, yeah, so I, I think we have our own little brand of, of misfits and odds and ends that you don't quite see in Nightmare Alley. Our <laughs> carnival's low class. It's dirty, it's poor. It is a low class carnival. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what are the advantages and challenges of directing as a family unit? Advantages, you could be eating a peanut butter jelly sandwich and be shooting five minutes later <laughs> yeah. because the clouds are right or because there's a bear outside your window when you live in the mountains. So that is really damn convenient. I don't think there are, I personally, I, I won't speak for these guys, I don't think there is a disadvantage to working with your family. Mm -hmm. uh, we're friends, mm -hmm. and it's fun to hang out with your friends. Always makes business and pleasure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think one of the, the only disadvantages is we kept shooting, and we bought this new tripod, and it was broken. Like, <laughs> as soon as we started filming, we were like, are you serious? <laughs> so there's a lot of duct tape involved, but you know what? It's okay. We can afford yeah. duct tape. And your crew's always around, Ooh. on call. I'll make you a sandwich in the morning if you get up and shoot right now yeah. at 5 a.m. The rain looks awesome. Uh, there's okay. lightning in the background. Absolutely. Okay, so a bit more specific to the plot of the film. Um, how did you come up with the decision for... Um, Eve to be a character who's mute yet sings as part of the act. <laughs> Do you want me to explain? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Well, you know what? I think it's a product of trauma, mm -hmm. you know, her not having a voice. You know, you can imagine having quite a bit of trauma growing up, watching your mm -hmm. mom being, you know, <laughs> as serious. Uh, I won't say, messed up. <laughs> um, but we still wanted to have her have a way to communicate and, you know, send this story along. What was some of your guys' reasoning for Yeah, I think originally we thought, well, why, what did people say? Why would this daughter stay with this family you know, when she's exposed to so much violence? And we thought, well, maybe she just really needs them. So we thought if she, maybe this child is someone who can't communicate on her own. I think in the end, um, it was interesting that she is just, for me, it's, it's both that she is traumatized to the point that she doesn't speak, but then on stage she has control. That's where she expresses herself. It, get, it sort of gives her her private dream. Mm -hmm. And she's a, this movie is about a question. Is she a good angel or a dark angel? Mm -hmm. And angels sing. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you mentioned trauma, so I think... Clearly, the, um, the character of Seven is a very traumatized character. You have the flashbacks to, uh, I'm guessing, the First World War. Yeah. So, so 
like him. He he is clearly traumatized, and then I think he gets more traumatized when he when this is what his family does, and then so his he and then pretty much. I don't want to spoil too much, but like in, in like the third act, Seven becomes pretty much a mute as well. So can you talk about, about that progression? That's a, a mm. great question. Yeah. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I, oh, I thought you were, I'm just saying it's a great point. Yeah, it's a great, great question. Um, look, this movie is about loving your family no matter what. Yeah. No matter what their dark secrets, no matter what trauma they've dealt, and no matter what trauma has been dealt to them. And... Seven needs all these characters pay. We wanted to make a violent movie, mm -hmm. but we also want our violence to be balanced with payment. All these characters pay for their violence and their acts. Seven loses his greatest asset, which is his mind. Mm -hmm. That's the hardest payment you can pay. Maggie loses her greatest asset, which is her powerful body. Mm -hmm. So that's, without giving away too much of the movie, why Seven becomes who he is mm -hmm. and then it's up to the daughter to decide whether she can be a good angel or a bad angel to fix it yeah, yeah. and um, just so I'm just can clarify the the poem that is repeated for from you wrote that yes <laughs> yeah because yeah. it does sound like something that could have existed back then Thank you. <laughs> this lyrical queen. <laughs> well, it was similar. Like in uh, the deeper you dig, too, we also had an old-sounding poem. It's you know, I, I kind of like the old, the old English. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, well, I know it's from like Hellbender previously. Is that music's a big role in your film? So, um, how do how would you say that music plays a role in um, Where the Devil Roams? <laughs> I think like we're not someone. People that really follow like a script, a hundred page script and every line needs to be hit. But our structure is our music. Mm -hmm. One of the things that guides us throughout the filmmaking process is this song is going to be here. This song is going to be here. And this one is going to top us up mm -hmm. off right in the end. So it's something that we can rely on. And is also a really comfortable like storytelling avenue for us mm -hmm. with its lyrics. And it's just, it feels like us, you know, it's home. Trying to figure out how to say this uh, without spoiling too much, but uh, um, so just pretty much like Maggie's main character trait. So how were you talking about that? Oh yeah, okay, so it gets safe to say that Maggie has a compulsion and it's a bloody one, <laughs> and her family accepts her. We, you know, we love conflict to overcome and and to show how much people love each other by managing that mm -hmm. conflict. Like, she's married to a former doctor who cannot stand the sight of blood anymore. And, and Maggie very much loves the sight of blood. The funnest thing about making horror movies is that you can use extreme situations to talk about regular situations. So, Maggie is a very flawed person. Now, she loves killing people. We can say that. <laughs> That's what the movie's about! And she loves killing people. And this family can get around it because they love her and she loves them. This is, what's so fun about making the art of horror is that's kind of, every family has to overlook, these kids have to overlook my f problems to love me. They have to say, yeah, dad's got issues, but I love him. And, and <laughs> no, but really, and that's all families have the same thing. We all choose, do we want to look over each other's curses and still love them, or are the curses too much? Because John was probably born to be a serial killer. Mm. And that's just. And thank <laughs> and that's God I'm married and have these people here to just keep <laughs> me like just to put it in movies. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think um, Vic May should have been able to recognize maps more easily, <laughs> <laughs> or, or or flags. I mean. Yeah, flags. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's not the sharpest tool in the shed. But she knows how to use it. Yeah. How <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, what's uh, next for you? We have a fun movie called Fairy mm -hmm. that we're excited to work on. Uh, can't say much, but um, we do love to make films that kind of connect to what's going on mm -hmm. in our real life. And one of the things I've been doing the past two years is... Uh, fashion modeling and it's a really fun world mm -hmm. and we've realized it's a great place for horror mm -hmm. so fashion shoot goes terribly wrong and <laughs> it's gonna be fun 
And Lulu's getting really good with an axe. Yes. <laughs> And we're so excited to have Lulu. Like it's it's so fun that we got to work with Lulu for where the devil roams, and now we get to work with her for fairy. And uh, it's just great. Like as a as four of us, mm -hmm. there's something special. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, that'll be it. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Thank you.